Hi, Els here. In the last video, you were introduced to the elements that are included on the balance sheet. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the format of a sample balance sheet. Note that the statement is so large that I've divided it into sections so that you can see them better. However, the balance sheet written on a piece of paper would show all of these sections together, one right after the other. As always, the statement starts with the heading, which must include the business name and the title of the financial statement. One change from previous statements? The balance sheet is at a point in time, not for a period of time. Why? Because every time a business has another transaction, their financial position changes. For example, if you have $10 in your pocket right now, and then you buy a Timmy's coffee, your financial position in the moment after you paid for your coffee has changed. That's why the balance sheet is a snapshot, one single second in time. The title of the statement reflects that by using the word at instead of for the period ending or for the year ending. Remember this as it's one of the most common mistakes students make on the balance sheet. Listed first on the balance sheet are the assets with the heading assets. Then there's the first subcategory, current assets. There you will see the details of the current asset accounts. Notice that the assets are listed in order of liquidity. What does that mean? The faster the business can convert the assets into cash, sell, use, or consume them, the higher they are on the listing of current assets. For example, cash is listed before accounts receivable. That's because the business constantly uses cash, while the collection of accounts receivable will take time, perhaps as long as 45 to 90 days from the balance sheet date. Note that current assets, which will be converted into cash, like accounts receivable, are always listed before assets that will be used or consumed. Accounts receivable will be collected in cash, but prepaid insurance will be used up over time. So things like prepaid rent, prepaid insurance, and supplies are all listed last, after accounts receivable. Is the order of the items that will be used or consumed over time important? Actually, no. I could have listed supplies first, and the statement would still have been correct. Next, there is a subtotal called Total Current Assets. Let's move on to long-term assets, ones that will last more than a year from the current balance sheet date. Remember that the long-term assets are subdivided into three different groupings. Each subcategory has its own heading and often its own subtotal. First is property, plant and equipment. At this point in the course, you actually haven't been exposed to a business that purchases long-lived tangible assets. So for now, we're going to leave this subcategory alone. You'll be introduced to this concept in a future video. Next, the heading intangibles, followed by an individual listing of all the intangible assets. These are listed in order of liquidity, from the intangible that lasts the longest to those that last the shortest. This benefits the stakeholders who are using the statements to make decisions. If there are more than one intangible assets, you also have to add a subtotal called total intangible assets. Finally, other assets, which are all the long-term assets that don't fall into the other subcategories. For instance, an accounts receivable that is outstanding for two years would be included in this catch-all subcategory of long-term assets. Also listed is the prepaid rent for year two. Remember, if we're going to use up the prepaid rent in the next year, it has to be listed under current assets. If the category has more than one line item, then a subtotal called total other assets must be included. At the bottom of the assets section is a total called total assets. This includes a total of all the subcategories together. Liabilities are next. Recall that liabilities are divided into current and long term with current listed first. This part of the balance sheet starts with the heading liabilities and then current liabilities. The current liabilities are listed in order of how fast they will be paid or settled. The faster they'll be settled, the higher they appear on the listing. Generally, current assets always starts with accounts payable as these are the liabilities that will be settled first. Notice that current liabilities include an account called current portion of note payable. What is this? It's the amount of the note payable that will be paid within the upcoming year. It's part of current liabilities because it meets the definition of a current liability. 
due within one year of the balance sheet date. To clarify, let's take a closer look. The business owes a total of $50,000 to the bank. The bank expects the business to pay back $1,000 every single month. That means that in the next 12 months, the business will pay $12,000 of the outstanding loan back to the bank. This meets the definition of a current liability, so it must be included under the current subcategory. The remaining $38,000 of the loan will be paid in the long term, over the following few years. The total amount of the loan is $50,000, but when divided between current and long term, the current portion at the balance sheet date is $12,000, and the long term portion is $38,000. Together, the total is correct, but the business has to show the two amounts separately. That's because they need to meet the definition under each subcategory. It's this $12,000 that shows up as part of the current liabilities on the balance sheet under the name Current Portion of Long-Term Debt, or here, Current Portion of Note Payable. Next, a total of all the current liabilities is provided. Businesses then list all the long-term liabilities, which are any liabilities that do not match the definition of a current liability, accounts which often have the word payable as part of the account name. Long-term liabilities have the same structure, starting with the heading Long-Term Liabilities. Next come a list of the accounts which make up this subcategory, and they have to be in order of when they need to be paid. The faster it needs to be paid, the higher the liability will be on the listing. Finally, a total long-term liabilities is required if there is more than one account, as there is in this balance sheet. Remember the current portion of the note payable? The long-term portion, which is due beyond the one-year period, is listed under long-term. The total note payable is the current portion plus the long-term portion together, which would be the $50,000 that is owed to the bank. The liabilities section closes with a total of all the liabilities, current and long-term, called total liabilities. It should be noted that if a subsection of liabilities has only one account, there is no need for a subtotal. For example, if long-term liabilities only had one account called note payable, then there would be no total long-term liabilities required. The amount of the note payable would simply be listed by itself with no subtotal, but still with a heading. Again, with more than one long-term liabilities account, there must be both a heading and a subtotal called total long-term liabilities. Next is the equity section with the heading equity. Details of the split between owner's capital and retained earnings is provided. Note that owner's capital is always listed first followed by retained earnings. That's because to start a business, the owners must have already contributed capital. That's why it's always listed first. A total equity is provided next, followed by a total of all the liabilities plus the equity called total liabilities and equity. That completes the balance sheet. Notice something very important. Total assets are equal to total liabilities plus total equity. This is the accounting equation you learned about in chapter two. This equation shows that economic resources, that's our assets, are financed either through debt, our liabilities, or equity. It's important to recognize that on the balance sheet, assets always equal liabilities plus equity. The accounting equation must always balance. Pause the video in order to answer the following check your understanding question. The balance sheet would not include which of the following accounts. The answer is definitely not A. Office supplies are owned and have future benefit for the business, so they would be recorded as current assets. The answer is not B, because unearned service revenue represents the services owed to the customer and is therefore on the balance sheet as a current liability. The answer is not C either, because capital contributions are the investment by owners and they appear on the balance sheet as the first item under equity. The answer is not E either because prepaid fire insurance is owned and will provide insurance coverage in the future, so it's recorded as a current asset. The correct answer is D because future customer orders are not included on the balance sheet. How can you determine this? Use the critical questions. What did the business get? An order for the future, but no cash. What did the business give away? Nothing because we will not provide the service until the future. This is an event, not a transaction. 
As such, it may be valuable to the business, but it can't be listed on their balance sheet. So what questions does the balance sheet actually answer? For owners, it shows if the business can pay its current and long-term debts as they come due, but it provides much more information than that, such as what is the breakdown of the assets? What's the breakdown of the liabilities? When are they due? In what order? For creditors, it indicates if there is enough assets to operate. If the business can't operate, are the assets liquid enough to cover the outstanding debts? Does the business have enough cash to pay its debts as they come due? Considering current debt levels, should a bank lend the business more money? For both owners and lenders, it answers the question, does the business use debt, liabilities, or equity to finance their operations? The balance sheet is not the last financial statement we're going to cover. The amount of cash from the balance sheet is used to create the statement of cash flows, which is the topic of our next video.